Yeah. Just yeah. A little. I think you'd just be little. good at hiding a body. That is a great, that is the best compliment. I'll help. To me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just throwing it out there. Hello. Do you want to play a game? What's your favorite scary movie? Be afraid. Be very afraid. You're going to need a bigger boat. Here's Johnny. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. Whatever you do, don't fall. Welcome to Talking Horror with Jamie and Nikisha. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm Nikisha, and this is Talking Horror with Jamie. And Nikisha. Where we share our love for all things scary and talk horror through the lens of human behavior. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> Such exciting times. Those those were our uh, nice little siren noises, our Ooh. celebration noises, because we have a special guest today. I'm going to hand it over to producer Brian to introduce our guest. Sure. So today we have a fantastic guest. I am so excited. We are talking about one of their favorite horror movies, The Cabin in the Woods. We are so happy to welcome the Hollow Queen herself, Ashlina. I love the term Hollow Queen. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Our absolute pleasure. Uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself uh, so that our audience kind of knows who you are what you're up to, what your mm-hmm. favorite horror movies are, why you chose mm-hmm. this one. There's so many things we could talk about. Oh, <laughs> there's literally so many things. Um, but first of all, hi, my name is Ashlina. I am a Twitch uh, broadcaster as well as content creator. Um, you can see me playing video games on Twitch and you can catch me doing um, fashion, beauty, IRL content um, on my other platforms. But what you will find that is cohesive across my content. It is very Halloween focused. Woo! Um, yes. Yes. Uh, I'm the lover of Halloween. We celebrate Halloween every single day here in my home, in my life, everything. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like a little spiel about me. I love um, it. And if you, I, if you want to find more uh, of Ashlina, in our description of this episode mm. are all yeah. of the links to wherever you want to find the YouTube, the the uh, Instagram, the Twitch. Everything TikTok. is there. The TikTok. Um, yeah. So definitely click on that and check check it out and 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 give some follows yes. and likes. Ah, thanks. And we're having a lot of fun so far. TikTok, like Halloween stuff, is starting to pop up in the stores, and so yes. I've been calling i've been traveling around trying to like get in and like get some footage and stuff like that and just like start celebrating early i i don't live my life by a calendar clearly uh but you know (laughs) just the october calendar uh, right yeah just october but like i don't know life is too short i keep telling people like we should be celebrating however we want to celebrate because one day i'm gonna look back at my life and i'm gonna remember these moments and that's most important besides like you know, I don't know. Absolutely. Like, if you want to yeah. celebrate Christmas, go ahead. Why are we living our life by a calendar or a timeline? If even, you know, wasn't mm-hmm. it just a made up construct anyways, you know? So <laughs> like, we also like know. lost three years. So fill uh, how these next uh, couple years, yeah. however you want. Yes. yes. <laughs> Seriously, You make such a good point because like we were stuck inside. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. No, uh, 100%. I totally agree. Um, as far as favorite movies, oh my gosh, I honestly have like a little bit of a list, but um, Halloween 1978, that's like my top movie. Like, mm-hmm. I love that movie. Sure. Um, Scream, um, His House. Oh my gosh. Is, yeah. So okay. Good. Public <laughs> service announcement. <laughs> His house, Here we go. Is, his, his house is in my top 10 horror movies mm-hmm. of all time. I think mm-hmm. it's a spectacular horror movie. It's on Netflix. This it's is, so we're just stopping the action to remind <laughs> you to watch His mm-hmm. House. And then, you know, feel free to listen to our His House episode. But no, um, definitely watch His House. Okay. Back to our regular yeah. schedule. Yeah. List. Yeah. No, 100% would recommend His House. It definitely touches on some cultural importance and just like things that happen in this world that you're not usually aware of. And to me, that is more horrifying than a lot of other things. Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah. So 
oh gosh that movie just like shook me to my core um hereditary love oh, so good. that movie. fantastic fantastic I love that movie um yes. the thing oh my god sure yeah that's probably my number one is the okay thing. like hmm. i love that movie um yeah those are just a couple train to busan i love that oh movie so as good well. mm-hmm. such a good movie um those are kind of the ones that i can think of off the top of my head of course like i love you know nightmare on elm street mm-hmm. friday the 13th like all of those yeah. classic slashers um but i would say like the thing and his house are like very much like top for me as far as how they made me feel after watching it spectacular Absolutely. taste just yeah. amazing oh, yes oh, thank y'all thank you so much oh, wow. and such um such a spectrum within yeah. the subgenres yes. yes. cuz i was going to ask if you feel like you're more of a practical effects horror girly mm-hmm. but like you also like his house so more right. like mm-hmm. psychological thriller type stuff as well so yeah it's right. a good I wide will... spectrum I will say, so some of my content that you will see like kind of closer to Halloween, I have a chronic illness, so I'm not really able to do like a lot of big things that I want to do because my illness unfortunately gets in the way. But I do SFX makeup. I do practical practical SFX makeup and stuff like that. So I would say that's why the thing is my favorite because Mm. of the practical SFX. Like they did Mm -hmm. such an incredible, I don't, I watch it and I'm like, I want to learn how to do this yeah. so bad, you know? Yeah. Um, for but sure. then yes, you take like his house and stuff like that. And it's, it's so different, but I would say I definitely lean more towards practical because mm-hmm. I kind of do that kind of stuff and I want to know how to do more and I want to, yeah. you know, I want to do yeah. it. <laughs> 100% practical effects. Uh, we've talked. We're about, very pro practical. We're things, very pro practical. Yeah. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. I, very pro practical. I I will stand. I will repeat my stance on this, and I'm I will never back down from this. I think that the new It movie is a perfect example of how it works and it doesn't work. I mm-hmm. really like mm-hmm. Chapter mm-hmm. One. I think mm-hmm. it's a great that movie. That is a good point. But yeah. that, and that opening sequence with Georgie oh. is amazing. The second that Pennywise turns from practical makeup to the like teeth and the mm-hmm. special the effects CGI. i just i'm out it's just right. it, but but like later when he's like doing his dancing or whatever and like it's yes. actually practical like that to me is more effective and scary and yeah. like yeah. special effects need to be really well not done mm-hmm. but well incorporated for oh, me yeah. to yes. like mm-hmm. totally buy into it and that's why with the new beetlejuice beetlejuice trailer yeah. I was Ah. so thrilled to see, and and I had read that they were doing practical effects and all of that, but Mm -hmm. to see it in the trailer, like I freaked out, genuinely made me like (laughs) happy. Oh yeah, Mm -hmm. and I I was really hoping that they were going to stick to it because that is that's Beetlejuice, like yeah, that is Mm -hmm. one of the things that they're known for is their practical SFX. I mean, if you think about that movie, however many years ago it came out, like that was so big for its time. Yeah, so eighty eight, I think yeah 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 i think oh gosh yeah so that i mean just oh yeah i'm super excited i didn't mean to talk over anybody but i like no not at all not at all i freaked out when the trailer came out and i saw that they were doing more practical i was like yes hell yeah that was great yeah talent it's just so impressive Mm -hmm. yeah it is yeah it's always impressive yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely i mean Mm -hmm. he's He's the father of practical SFX. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are more, of course, like, you know, those who work on The Walking Dead and like things like Amazing. that. But yes. Tom <laughs> is Tom is just the king, in my opinion. Like, love him. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be him. <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be him. <laughs> yes. Well, there's not a lot of practical effects. I mean, like, there's there's a few mm-hmm. in the movie that we're talking about uh, mm-hmm. today. But let's get into it because there is a lot to discuss. So Ashlina mm-hmm. picked for us the 2011 science fiction comedy horror, The Cabin in the Woods, Woo! which Woo! I would just like to <laughs> say I didn't realize it was The Cabin in the Woods because I mm-hmm. always just say Cabin in the Woods. But mm-hmm. let me, we're on a podcast. Let me be proper. Let me put the article in there. <laughs> The cabin in the woods. <laughs> so professional. Yes. You know, Thank we try so to be much. because we're we're hashtag doing our best here on this podcast. Right. Hashtag yes. doing yes. our best. I love that. I love that. But and your this best film... is the best. I right, thank mm-hmm. you. We try. Mm-hmm. We really do. <laughs> well, this film was directed by a one Drew Goddard in his directorial debut, which I did not uh, realize that. And what a directorial mm-hmm. debut because mm-hmm. I mean this is a 
very very solid uh, horror movie and it stars Kristen Connolly, uh, Chris Hemsworth, Anna Hutchinson, Fran Krantz, Jesse Williams, Richard Jenkins, and Bradley Whitford. Mm-hmm. Now, heavy spoilers for The Cabin in the Woods if you have not seen it. And Jamie, please hit us with all those trigger warnings. Oh, boy. I mean, there's kind of a lot <laughs> of them when you think about, like, the scale of the type of things we're seeing really in like the latter half of the movie. Sure. Yes. Um, right. But there is, there is drug, drug use depicted. Mm-hmm. There's some <gasps> promiscuity um, <laughs> yes. references to sex. Uh, um, and Uh-oh. then, and then it's a lot of insides on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, a, a, a significant amount of uh, blood um, gore. I mean, it is also presented as like, like satire. Right. And so mm-hmm. it's not, it, it's both like a lot like for the purpose of the movie but also like important to warn people that like there is a lot of like slashery gore so much blood. uh mm-hmm. yeah eating of body parts mm-hmm. stabbings kissing uh, wolves uh, yes <laughs> with tongue my tongue. Dad. oh french with tongue. sorry french yeah. kissing wolves yeah <laughs> screaming uh. Hey, there's people out there that will appreciate yeah, it. Taxidermy. Yeah, taxidermy. The clarification. I guess more specifically, taxidermy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. We got to be specific. The, yeah. the wolf was not alive, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. French kissing mm-hmm. taxidermy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Different um, realm. Different realm. Different, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, I do also want to point out that there is, like, what I would categorize as, like, a weird relationship between the professor and the student. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, good that one. That is referenced. Mm-hmm. So, like, putting that out there. Mm-hmm. Um, Voyeurism. Even though the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, this whole movie is voyeuristic. Aren't all movies um, voyeurism? <laughs> I. I mean, I guess. <laughs> What's that? I. That's a new word that I haven't heard. What does that mean? Like Jay? us watching them without, without them, them knowing. knowing about yeah. it or consenting to it. Oh. Mm-hmm. I've never heard that word before. Oh, that's so fancy. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Up when you say it. Yeah. Voyeurism. I, I mean. <laughs> I feel like that's a- yeah. <laughs> when in doubt, pinky out. <laughs> first, oh my god! First is first. First, 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 first. Um, uh, yeah. Am I missing anything? I know I mentioned the the marijuana. Um, yeah. I'm just like any kind of monster work. that you've ever seen in a horror movie. Oh yeah, work also. <laughs> Very triggering. Yeah, corporate. Um, corporate. Oh, gambling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gambling, Gamb- betting. Yeah. Oh. Um, wow. Uh, I guess like like summoning zombies, yeah. literally everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. it's truly also, if, like ritualistic. If you're like a fear mm-hmm. of like the end of the world, like oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Apocalyptic. apocalyptic fears, mm-hmm. I think that's something that that could be real. Yeah. Good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like giant monsters. Oh yeah, if you like, if you don't like big things, this might not be the film for you. <laughs> if you don't like this, if you don't like big things, yeah. just don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, because truly, it's it's like Jamie was saying any of your worst kind of nightmare they have yeah. put in this movie That's a good especially point. towards the yeah. end oh yeah mm-hmm. oh, so yeah. it's the clowns it's the werewolves it's the hellraiser the creatures, there's a spider yeah. a merman <laughs> there's an abigail before oh, abigail. Yeah. There's, an abigail. there's an abigail i thought about yeah. that too <laughs> mm-hmm. there's so much i yeah. love it Ah, uh, well, yes, yeah, so much to discuss, so much to get into. But producer Brian, please give us some words before we get that plot summary. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hi, everybody. Don't forget uh, that you can find us wherever you get your podcast. If this is your first time listening, you can find us on YouTube. You can find YouTube. You can find us on uh, <laughs> what's it called? Spotify. You can find us on, yes. <laughs> on um, oh, that one. Apple yes, Podcasts. That one. And then you can find us on all so- social at all social media at on, media on all social media at Talk Horror Pod, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Find us on all of those. And we're we're covering other movies that we don't do on the podcast on TikTok. Um, mm, we're okay. we're we're getting uh, we're getting to twenty k slowly <gasps> but surely. So stop it right now. That's we're Hold at on. sixteen. You're on TikTok following right now. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's what you should do, listeners, as well. <laughs> yeah. um, Producer Brian puts a lot of work into that TikTok. Yeah. So much so that perhaps, perhaps a TikTok of ours was featured. Oh yeah. 
in an advertisement That's true. Um, for a film coming up. Yeah. Yes. Um, Shut your mouth. A24 reached out to us to use our our trailer reaction mouth. for Maxine, and they used it on the Instagram. Shut. It was very us. cool. Yeah. Thank I didn't read the comments, though, because I wasn't emotionally, <laughs> right, emotionally right. ready for people to say, like, whose <laughs> no. face is that? <laughs> that is incredible because also coincidence how weird is this i literally just watched x and pearl this past week. oh really oh my god, yes. oh my god. Uh, yes. all i want to do is ask you all about it so are you <laughs> are you an x person or a pearl person do you oh which do you prefer god, that is Ooh. so hard that is so hard because like obviously and just real quick for everyone that's listening yeah so x is like very much a call out to texas chainsaw massacre totally yes. um and then maxine is its own it's a, oh, excuse me pearl is its own like mm -hmm. all within itself and like mm -hmm. her kind of breaking and unhinging like oh i just love it i just love Chef's it kiss. so freaking Chef's much kiss. and then of course you know studio a24 like they have to do their whole thing and like the end where she's just smiling like oh, the credits roll through. so good it's so good so like i would say i'm definitely more pearl because of like yeah the way that it made me feel and like how yes. i just freaking love mia goth so much but oh, um, yes <laughs> right her unhingedness is just so and like how they just throw in like her killing animals just randomly oh. like oh mm -hmm. okay yes. oh my that's, god that's not creepy or anything but i will say my favorite scene in x is her in the lake and you see that alligator just yeah. swimming towards her. That that scene, I was like, this is probably the scariest horror scene I've ever seen. Like, yes, yeah, ever. Because that's terrifying. It is fantastic. Oh, yeah. So, anyways, that's my whole spiel on those two great, great, great movies. Yes. But I'm definitely a Pearl girl. I'm a Pearl girl. Pearl girl. I <laughs> yeah. think we're Pearl girls too, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. That was my number yeah. one oh, movie yeah. of the year. Yes. Of the year. Okay. In a tough yeah. year. <laughs> That was yeah. an intense year, and that was your number was. one. I think, that, mm -hmm. and that was number one. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Jamie and now I, I want to watch it again. Jamie and I had Barbarian. <laughs> I think we did have Barbarian. As number yeah. one. Barbarian. Oh, oh yeah. no. Oh no. Y'all aren't oh, gonna no. like me, but I didn't like it. That's fair. We really. I, no. Nikisha didn't really either. It's very divisive. Either. Okay. I think it's perfect. <laughs> I... Okay, I will say I don't know what I was expecting. Yeah, to be honest. totally. I, I didn't mm -hmm. know what I was expecting, but I remember after it being over, I was like, well, that's not what I wanted, but I don't know what I want. <laughs> Interesting. That's totally fair. fair. Totally yeah, that's totally fair. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, so, for yeah. sure. <laughs> oh, so good. Oh, my gosh. We could, like, talk about it. I know. We have to get to this. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we need a plot summary of The Cabin in the Woods, and since we have a special guest... <clears throat> Excuse me, Ashlina, you will have two minutes on the clock Ooh. to give us a plot summary. And Jamie will time you. She'll let you know when you can start. And if you could just please give us your best. It's totally fine. We've all done it and all have sucked at it. It's fine. <laughs> okay. The plot summary of this. Watch the plot. <laughs> No well, pressure. <laughs> no, right, right. Well, all the pressure because I'm a Virgo and I'm very <laughs> organized. Um, but I just went ahead and like maybe like wrote some notes. So here we go. Oh, here is I my. Love it. I know that's right. I Listen, my best it. friends are Virgos, so yeah, I yeah. totally get it. Organization mm -hmm. is my best friend. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, ready whenever you are. Okay, all right, a ready. Yes, go. Okay, you accompany a group of teenagers as they head off for a secluded weekend in the woods. While staying in a cabin in the woods, things do not go as planned and things start taking place that are out of their control. Little do they know there is more to the nightmare than meets the eye. Are the things happening around them due purely to teenage curiosity or does it go deeper than that? The end. Whoa. Wow. You have you still have like a minute and a half left. And that was like the most concise summary that was. I feel like we've ever gotten. Yay! Oh my like, like truly. Yes. No offense, like, truly. Brian, but like truly Don't I don't I I, I I spend all two minutes on the first thirty seconds of the movie. <laughs> That's so true. I'd literally oh like, and they're packing up, but they're actually all really smart. So that's how we set it up. <laughs> and then like, and then Jamie would be like, you have 10 seconds left. I'll be like, oh, <laughs> then they go to the cabin, they pick a book and they're underneath it and uh, the <laughs> world ends. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the plot. I, oh my gosh. I am obsessed with this. Uh, that was fantastic. 
that was fantastic, Ashlina. Thank you so much. Course, well, let's so. get into it. Let's dive deeper with our first segment, Likes and Gripes. And now our Likes and Gripes. Now, Ashlina, since you're our guest, please mm-hmm. go first and let us know, you know, um, your experience watching this movie. Like, when did you watch this for the first time? Okay. And then give us some likes and gripes. Why did you want us to cover this? All the okay. things. Okay. Um. So I think I watched this movie like maybe two years ago for the first time. Oh, so like, cool. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fairly recent. Um, maybe even three. I don't What is time, right? Like, what is even Fair. time? Yep. What um, is it? Mm-hmm. But I remember very much not, I didn't, I didn't want my friend, because I watched it with a friend, I didn't want my friend to tell me anything about it. I was like, don't, don't tell me anything. Like, I looked at the cover and I was like, oh, okay, like, I think I might have some sort of an idea. Um, Didn't have any clue. Um, <laughs> Love this movie. It was really hard for me to honestly sit down and think of any dislikes. I'm literally going to have to pull them, like, excuse me, out of my ass because, like, I really liked the movie. I really enjoyed the heck out of it. It was such Mm -hmm. a fun spin on horror. And I even wrote a little quote. This is like my little quote, but it's a celebration of horror and an ode to all horror fans. Cause I really do feel like it's a true call out. We all know what's going on. We watch the part and we're like, this is this, this is that. Oh my God, this is this movie Necronomicon, you know, like all of these mm-hmm. things. Like we, mm-hmm. we just, you know, any true horror fan is going to watch this movie and just be so excited about it. But I think, like I said, pulling out of my ass, uh, dislikes would probably be like, I, I, so comedy for me is kind of hard to come by me. Like I'm definitely like a SpongeBob kid. Don't get me wrong. But, yes. <laughs> like sometimes comedy is very hit or miss for me. And mm-hmm. if you cross certain lines, I'm like, oh, that's not funny. Like, I just don't think that that's funny. This, it almost pulled at those strings a little bit of like, oh, like they took this a little bit too far. Mm-hmm. Like, I wish mm-hmm. they would have like stopped like falling into this comedy, but not mm. enough to like bother me. You know what I mean? Sure. Like at the same time, it didn't like bother me. So that would say that's my only dislike. Um, it's just like the comedy part of it, like maybe going a little bit too far. Um, that's that's interesting because the com- and and it, it, I bet you that this comedy, my guess, totally guessing mm-hmm. that this comedy would not have worked for you if it wasn't so meta. Because right. because the comedy mm-hmm. is working towards the point it's trying exactly. to make, as opposed to being like dumb for dumb's sake. If that right. does that mm-hmm. does that right. make sense? So like yes, no, we're talking about the cabin in the woods versus stepbrothers or whatever. Sure, like, I yeah, feel like totally. yeah, I mean like stepbrothers is. I mean, I haven't seen it, but I'm assuming it's like stupid just to be dumb because it's like Will Ferrell, right? But cabin in the like it you need you need those context clues in order to understand like this is what's happening so yes i think Mm -hmm. the comedy with the context is so important but like i said i'm just like i'm pulling i i i loved everything about it uh (laughs) i think i will say i think the ending was my absolute favorite i remember it starting you know with them getting down there and like them getting locked in the control room and everything and pressing the button and just being like this is the most amazing thing i've ever seen i love this part so oh my god yes this is a celebration of everything that we love and there's blood and just yes all the, I was all like, the good yeah give me more mm-hmm. you know kind of feeling um so i would can say I, like go ahead I'm go sorry. ahead go can, ahead no can i ahead. ask you what was your favorite uh kill in in the movie oh gosh you know if honestly, you had to choose <laughs> Honestly, I think I'm going to choose this one because it's the most memorable and it's like the sex scene kill where yes. she mm. gets beheaded. Sure. I, I just because it's like very memorable and it like sticks with you and you're like, oh, OK, so I'm going to go with that one. Um, yeah. yeah. But I don't know, just all of those kills at the end. It was just wonderful. I know, and I'm like yeah. smiling and I feel like like a weirdo creepo, but like we are weirdos and creeps, you know? Yeah. So, no, <laughs> yes. I loved it. I, I will say too, um, it was I forgot that Chris, Chris Hemsworth was in this, and I'll just yes. piggyback off of uh, yes. you, Ashley, you know, with with my likes and gripes as well because I also watched this movie 
within the last like four Mm -hmm. or five years. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this was very new to watch and see. But of course, I'm a watch mojo girly and I (laughs) knew what the ending was supposed to Mm -hmm. be because it's like top 10 biggest twists in horror movies, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's like, okay. But I still was so shocked when I watched the movie Mm -hmm. all the way through and thought that it was so well put together. Yeah. Going back. I forgot that Chris Hemsworth was in this. And I just want to say that I think I would prefer to see him in the horror movie genre than oh, in the Marvel yes. genre. Sure. Like, oh, yeah. <clears throat> he's great oh, yeah. in, in the Marvel genre, you know, Thor all day, every day. Mm-hmm. But it's truly like. <laughs> That's the name of just... the next Thor movie. <laughs> Thor all, <laughs> all day, day, every Thor day. day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Trademark that. Give me yeah. some money. Marvel. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, but I just really had a good time seeing mm-hmm. him be just kind of the buffoon of it all or trying the to jock. be like the masculine yeah. yeah and be the joke yeah. and mm-hmm. and all that stuff but uh i also forgot that uh sigourney sigourney weaver was in this mm-hmm. until the end mm-hmm. and i was like wait what hey girl how's it going this is mm-hmm. absolutely something that you will probably concoct and be a part of because right. she's like one <laughs> right. of those badass boss bitches and i love it and Mm -hmm. i'm like yeah girl absolutely um at the very beginning i will say that the title card jump scare fantastic amazing for me 10 out of 10 sure that's a great great it was so fun to just have them like riding along in their little car like we don't know what's really happening what's going on and it's just like bam and i'll say Mm -hmm. as a general thing i really general thing didn't general gist (laughs) general thing i forgot how good the jump scares in this yes were yeah yes and i was so happy that even watching it a second time it still uh, you know got me in a sense Mm -hmm. because i now appreciate more not having the music build up not having the Mm -hmm. slow frames Mm -hmm. and then I just want things to just happen. Yeah. Like people are talking and then Jesse Williams gets stabbed. That's, that's what I want. Sure. But that's also <laughs> you know? the tone of this movie. And if it was mm-hmm. anything else, yes. then I think it wouldn't have worked as well. And to piggyback True. off what you just said, Nikisha, we're, we're, we're doing all the leapfrogs here. Um, yes. <laughs> I really like the cold opening of this movie, you know, everything up until the title card. And then we go to them packing because I think that, what makes this movie one of the many things that makes this movie very successful is that it it resets your expectations immediately so it's mm-hmm. not like we're watching them get ready and then it's like uh they're coming they're coming and you're like trying to figure out this mystery like there's still a bit of a mystery but you right. already know you're in in store for something that is not your typical horror movie yes. and and so i think that it's kind of like the, the concept of like, if if you're in a comedy, make sure you give the audience permission to laugh immediately so yes. they know that they can. And I feel like yes. that cold open in this gave us permission to let the movie be weird. Right. And, yes. and It set the expectation. Yeah, it totally. It set the expectation, which I think a lot of movies kind of miss that mark of like, okay, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about this. Exactly. So, yeah. Right. I mean, it go ahead it went it goes ahead and sets the ex- expectation right away um yeah which i so. love and and also to to jump off that too it being fully aware of like the tropes yeah. and and all yeah. the things mm-hmm. and like yes who mm-hmm. these people are and like we know who we're going to get which is just a callback, like Ashlina said, to like all the other horror movies. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, you have the dumb couple that's going to die because they decided to have sex right. in the woods. Mm-hmm. You know, right. we know we have the the guy that might know too much or who's high all the time or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, mm-hmm. and we have like the smart girl or whatever the case may be. And then the right. jock and all that. Right. Um, but I just love that they are fully aware of the tropes. And to Brian's point, too, I put in my notes that the juxtaposition of the dry humor between the two corporate men men who are running us at the beginning mm-hmm. uh, with knowing that they're working on something that's so serious mm-hmm. it's, it was just so fun to see uh that put together and i think they did a right. really good job of balancing oh, yeah. that like they're talking about the lives and devs of humanity uh, yes, yes. Yes. In, in their hands and they're just making jokes and making bets and you know Who's all this stuff like first? that yeah yeah like it's a typical tuesday and right. you're just yeah. like 
Yeah. But y'all are, this is hinged on like your life. Right. Mm -hmm. Like not just other people, like your life included. So I just think that the tone was presented in a really good way. Absolutely. And I will say this till I die because every time someone has to stop for gas in like a creepy little spot, <laughs> oh, yeah, my, right. <laughs> my dad always tells me never, ever, ever, ever drive your car below halfway yeah. because <laughs> then you're not having to deal with having to stop anywhere because no, you need right. to get gas sure. in mm-hmm. the home. Then you have the choice. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So you need to go where you have the choice and you can go to like a pilot, you know, like, uh, a, like one of yeah. those really big stations that are well lit. And then it was just funny to me because when they had to pull into that gas station, the creeper gas station, I'm just like, <laughs> uh-huh. this wouldn't happen if you made sure you had uh, gas right. beforehand, yep. guys. Wait, right. <laughs> Nikisha, why did you choose pilot as your example? Because those are the ones that I go to all the time. Okay. Are those more... <laughs> Those are nice. Are pilots are nicer? Are pilots yeah. like in New Jersey or like growing up in the South? Oh no! You know what it's from because when I was on tour, I would drive the tour, and there's mm. always a pilot every time I would oh, go from yeah. city to city. Oh, interesting. Are they like truck stop kind of related yes. as well? So they're like nicer. Oh. They got the showers in there. They got like the nice. They got bathrooms. showers. Yeah. Restrooms. Yeah. And yeah. It's definitely you're right, Ashley. A truck. You're stop. elevated. Right. Yeah. Gas station yeah. Experience. Yeah. It's interesting. It's debatable, yes. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Which one curious. would you choose, Brian? I don't know. I I probably would have said like uh, BP because those are uh, no. Initials. Yes, true. <laughs> um, what are the red ones? Not QT, the other one. Like um, like Exxon's oh. or Sun. Uh, oh, yeah. What's um, Sunoco? Sunoco, maybe something okay. like yes. that. But those are more. You would find those more in like the Garden State Parkway or the, the yeah. 95. I'm like I don't even know yeah. what those Luke are. Oil? Sheets. Mm. Oh, Never heard of that. Sheets. Love it. Yeah. Oh my god, sheets are so good. Well, sheets is like Wawa, but like oh, in okay. more, yeah, like okay. more Western PA. Okay. Yes. See, I'm in it. Georgia, so I don't know any of the things that you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> See? There you go. I'm from Alabama, but I didn't okay. know okay. about the other places until right. I was mm-hmm. driving around the country. Sure, sure. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then I was Absolutely. like, okay, I'm gonna and stop. That's here. been gas talk. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's gas station. Yes. <laughs> but no, um, you're right. You're right. Them having yeah. to get gas. I mean, mm-hmm. and again, just a you know, call out to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, mm-hmm. and just all I just I I love it. It was it was yes. just so good. Like I said, it's it's almost like what Wes Wes I always do this. Wes Craven did with yes. Scream. You know what I mean? Sure. It's it's yes. it, revolutionized and it made us look at horror and like say oh i see now okay <laughs> there's a shit yeah. you know mm-hmm. um and celebrating it in a different light so i think that's another reason why i like it is because scream is also another one of my favorite movies sure so, yeah yeah so good Woo-woo. i know I, I was gonna say you got the hoodie on got yes the hoodie on. i love it we're love here it. we're ready and prepared mm-hmm. um but yeah just like a few a few more likes that i will present to the group and then mm-hmm. just one big gripe that uh i had um <clears throat> i i sorry sorry i'm going through my notes i already said jump scare i loved the weed guy because i'm just like yeah he knows what's going on <laughs> mm-hmm, and i mm-hmm. like that even though his trope is supposed to be uh, oblivion to mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. it was still like he was the one who caught on to everything and i just really appreciated yeah. that mm-hmm. um not that i'm a marijuana user but <laughs> i just really appreciated <laughs> the marijuana guy knowing everything uh <laughs> yes and I also put moral of the story, marijuana uh, keeps you sharp. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we learned here. That's what we learned here. <laughs> um, Beautiful. And I, I thought this movie was so fun because it's like you're seeing a director make a horror movie mm. because you're seeing these people Ooh, like yeah. create this situation Ooh, that yeah. is a horror movie. It's like a horror Truman show. Yeah. Ooh. Literally. Though. Yeah. Literally. Love. Absolutely oh, love funny. that. Yeah. My my one biggest gripe though is that Dana, the girl who's the virgin girl who's supposed mm-hmm. to be like the the one who saves everyone, she got on my last nerve. Oh, interesting. I was so annoyed at her because when she, they she opened the book and she's mm-hmm. like reading the diary or whatever, mm-hmm. and then there's like Latin there, and then she's like, 
blah, blah, blah. And the guy's like, don't, don't read the Latin. What are you doing? <laughs> don't and she's just like, oh, it doesn't mean dead. anything. Mm -hmm. And just, re how do you know it doesn't mean anything? You don't speak Latin. Yeah. Do you yeah. just feel like you just want to say these things? Yeah. And yes, it could be like they were pumping whatever in the air mm -hmm. to make them mm -hmm. like do yes, crazy right. things. Right. But even still, I was just so annoyed because <laughs> if you're the one who's supposed to be like, the most knowledgeable and aware mm -hmm. in this like you're supposed to be the final girl quote unquote in right. this it's mm -hmm. like you gotta have a little bit more than that <laughs> which is the only trope that i feel like they broke in this was weed guy smart virgin smart girl not so smart you know like mm -hmm. they broke yeah. that. they kind of like had it opposite um and maybe who knows they had like a secret vendetta behind that but you know like <laughs> yes. I just, that's so funny that mm -hmm. it ended up being that way yeah, it was, and then she almost killed. Uh, uh -huh. His name is Marty. That's yes, uh, Marty. The, mm -hmm. the guy at mm -hmm. the end. And I'm like, yeah, girl, this is why I don't like you. You are uh, <laughs> very mm -hmm. annoying. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, overall, I love that it's not a happy ending. We yes. always talk about that on the podcast too. Yes. Jamie likes the not happy ending thing. So uh, <laughs> love that it's like, yeah, this is humanity, and we right. need to start mm -hmm. over. So uh, this, yeah, go ahead do all the things mm -hmm. you know and <clears throat> but it's fun to see kind of like the trolley problem in this talking right. about like ethics of like yeah. kill one for humanity yeah. or like just let all of humanity kind of fall right um mm -hmm. but yeah i also love and this is my last thing i love when big names don't survive so the fact that like chris hemsworth and right. like jesse williams die right. in this mm -hmm. right it's like absolutely yes you're pulling uh west craven with the scream yeah. yes. and just Yes. Like, no one is off the table as far as like Game of Thrones. No one's safe. Yeah, yeah, no one yep. is safe. But it's yeah. it's almost more fun now because they weren't famous at the time. So mm. like, oh true, yeah. But 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 true. but that's okay. Was Chris Hemsworth not famous in no, twenty eleven? Really. Not really. Huh. I think what was his debut movie? I can't remember. But Snow White came out it. in twenty twelve. <laughs> okay, and that was like a big deal. Oh, Thor came out in 2011. Oh, okay. Well, Thor came out in 2011, but I, I still... I don't think... I, yeah, I, I, I still imagine people weren't, like, super knowledgeable about no. him. But I think yeah. after that, then it was, like, But especially huge. two different genres of, okay, Thor, superhero action versus mm -hmm. horror. I guarantee mm -hmm. you they didn't know each other existed. You know what I mean? So this came yeah. out a month before Thor came out. Oh. Oh, okay. So there so you go. Yeah. This yeah, came yeah, out yeah. on okay. April and that and Thor came out in May. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow, that's huge for him. I know. <laughs> that is like cuz that's two really solid uh, movies yeah. for the year, you know. And he's delicious. Sorry, but yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone disagrees with you. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. And Fantastic. I, that sentiment of like I would like to see him in more horror. Yes, yeah, same girl. Same. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Come on, oh, save yeah. some people. Like, oh, yeah. let's let's get her done. Yes, <laughs> same of them all. Yes. Same of them, or be or you or know be, be the uh, American Psycho. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh Either my way. god, could you imagine? Oh man. Oh, that, man, that that would fantastic. be fantastic. Mm, interesting. Producers, yeah. if you're out there listening, uh, right. you know, we have some great ideas. <laughs> we have some really good ideas, and you should hire us. Thank you. Right. Thanks. <laughs> uh, but yes, that's all of my likes and gripes. Brian and Jamie, would you either of you like to go? Jamie, go for it. Sure. Um, so I think I saw this movie when it came out. I I saw it in theaters. Um, Ooh. I, yeah, like I, this was like me at my, I'm getting more into horror, mm. uh, and like really kind of throwing myself into it. And, um, what a good I, one. What a good one. It, oh my God. With. Yeah. And like immediately Ish. fell in love. Mm -hmm. Like, just like yeah. it, it spoke to me and I was mm -hmm. like, this is excellent. Um, I truly love this movie. I love the the whole cast makes me so happy because mm -hmm. this is very like this is Josh Sweden's like people mm -hmm. like all of the people. Um, if anybody has ever seen, I I can't recommend Dollhouse more okay. highly. <laughs> okay. um, it's like a science fiction show written written and directed by Josh Sweden, but okay. um, for, the guy who plays Marty Frank Krantz oh, okay. is in mm -hmm. it. It stars Eliza Dushku. Um, it's like, it's a wild premise. I'm not going to okay. share anything about it, but oh man, <laughs> that was a great show. Um, and so he's in it. 
obviously Bradley Whitford and Richard Jenkins. It's just like, mm-hmm. what? It's just like every single person that like keeps coming out. I'm just like, what? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, also the, uh, the, ke- the, the woman from the chemistry department who was with them the whole time. She's also mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. dollhouse. So that's oh, another Joss okay. Whedon person. So it's like wow. him always kind of like pulling from his like crew of people, but like, they're all great. So it's um, like Hill house haunted, uh, haunting. Yeah. Like, like, like oh, yeah, yeah. Pulling yeah, yeah. those, like the regulars, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. the Flanagan mm-hmm. regulars. Right. Oh, right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My Flanagan. Yeah, I, know. Um, I can't, I can't, I was like, I can't get distracted by my Flanagan right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my bad. My bad. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but uh, no, I I love how every I watch I've rewatched this movie so many times, and every re- rewatch just like makes me love it more. Mm-hmm. I don't think I will ever get tired of this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, the rewatchability is so high. Yes. I think for a lot of reasons, because yeah. like for one, seeing all of the monsters at the end is yes. so satisfying, and yes. being like, oh that one, and like oh that mm-hmm. one, and like. Like, I got really excited about the Abigail one this time around because, like, obviously that's a newer movie right. that just came out. Right. But, like, they already conceptualized this, like, creepy, you know, ballerina who, like, mm-hmm. only has teeth for her face. Right. Uh, and, and like, that's funny. So it's, like, you still get so much enjoyment from, like, the tropes because right. that's, like, what they're making fun of. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what I found most enjoyable about this watch is, like – kind of seeing the manipulation happen over time yeah um because you only get a really brief experience with these characters before they leave Mm -hmm. for their trip Mm -hmm. but you get them as their like authentic selves before any manipulation has happened Mm -hmm. and so like it's it's i remember the first time watching it being like why did they end up like so silly um mm-hmm. like why how how did we get to like these tropes and like it took like the rewatch to be like oh like this was like really insidious and like right very clever mm-hmm. and also that was like my you know my little baby brain when I saw this in 2011 mm-hmm. so like I I couldn't like conceptualize this fully <laughs> um but with time you know now I'm like oh yeah watch the puppet masters pulling the strings like it's so satisfying but it's also so funny because you get like Chris Hemsworth actually being book smart in the beginning mm-hmm. before he's like you know big books can't read like right. whatever like silly things <laughs> he's saying later right. on like to, yes. to reinforce the jock trope but like I love how he like he's like don't read this crap and you think it's the jock trope but in reality he pulls a different book off the shelf and he's like no I I love this one you should really read this one mm-hmm. like it's so funny right um <laughs> And then, uh, and then you have Marty, which I didn't say this as a trigger warning, but I'm not really a fan of the fact that he's like driving really high, actively smoking. Yeah, sure. not great oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> not the best, but again, it's like <laughs> you're getting somebody who's presenting as like really silly and goofy and just mm-hmm. like high, and you're not taking seriously. Yeah. And so, like as he's saying all these things, he's actually very intuitive and oh, smart, yeah. and like mm-hmm. I, I just I love that, but. It's funny, Nikisha, you talking about, like, the final girl, Mm -hmm. I actually like the fact that she's, that she kind of sucks because it reinforces (laughs) the fact that, like, she's not actually the final girl. She's not the virgin. She's not even a virgin, as she, like, references. So it's like, she doesn't, she can't even, and they, and Sigourney Weaver even makes that comment of, like, we do what we can. Like, we make do with what we have, essentially. Mm. It's like she's not even going to fit into the trope perfectly because Mm -hmm. she can't because none of them are actually like the athlete, the whore, the Mm -hmm. scholar, like they're, they're not exactly that. And so like, I kind of like that she, that she doesn't really figure it all out, that she still has all these flaws that are being presented. Um, and that she doesn't like, she's not the final girl because she doesn't survive. So it like all of that stuff, I feel like kind of makes it makes me more okay with the fact that she's like, so flawed making all these like very silly choices um but uh so i really like all of that um uh what else oh uh something i i don't know if it's a like or a gripe but it was kind of talking about like the jokiness to like the seriousness of them and their work but also like the bigger picture of like saving humanity yeah it's so it's very weird there's this one scene where like I think it might be the first kill where um, they like suddenly switch from making they're making jokes because, of course, you see the it's the trope of like, you know, a woman getting topless in a horror movie Mm, and they're joking about it. But then all of a sudden, when she dies, they 
fully switch gears and do like a, I forget what they say, but it's like like to the old ones or like something weird. Like thank and you it's for like, your sacrifice. Yeah, something type. like it's yeah. it's like yeah. almost like prayer like. Yeah. I yes. found yes. it's like very disturbing and yeah. jarring and like it it just like fully like you, you don't have enough time to kind of process what's happening. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but I I feel like I kind of like it because again it's like it's kind of um like rubber banding back and forth yes. between the humor and like the, the severity of the situation yes. that they're finding themselves mm. in. Yeah. Which is probably um, what makes it memorable within itself too is because yeah. like, wait, I didn't even have time to recover from that. Wait, what did he say? I need to rewind, yeah. it, you know, kind of thing. So I definitely, that's a great, great point that you made. Yeah. I also think it's a, you know, we've gotten so much of this kind of bedding and this compartmentalizing mm-hmm. that like, mm-hmm. that's the first time that, kind of the work culture shows up it, mm-hmm. it's kind of like coloring what they're actually doing and i really like that i wish they'd continued a little bit more in other parts yeah. um yeah. just to kind of show that like even though they're they're just like us in the office um <laughs> I, I but that just reminds us that what they're doing is 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 different um, yeah. yeah yeah i definitely um, think it speaks to how this world kind of works within itself too and just like how there's always going to be people above us trying to control Mm. us and do things Mm -hmm. for their benefit aka not the world ending you know what I mean so yeah I I definitely feel like there's some manipulation tactics maybe in there as well Um, Mm -hmm. but it definitely if you okay we're talking about just surface level great movie but this is what we do we dissect these movies and we look further into into them and like this is when you start to uncover like wait a second this is a lot like life this is a lot how like being a teenager feels like and how this Mm -hmm. works and like all of this stuff so that's why I love discussing horror because there's so much more to it than meets the eye so definitely absolutely yeah yeah I mean like horror is like often a commentary on like reality yep and and yep. you know from however close it's like kind of mimicking like the parallels versus mm-hmm. like something that's like you know further removed but there's still a lot that it's trying to mm-hmm. say absolutely um, yeah i prefer my escapism to not be so realistic but right. you know oh, <laughs> right too light <laughs> right yes but like i mean even for me like as someone who and like i'm totally fine like admitting this like i'm terrified of death like i'm scared to die like i really am i have a very hard time with like understanding and comprehending death but i watch all of this death all of the time you know it's it's <laughs> it's a psychological thing it mm-hmm. really is and like you know jamie i know you and i we we have that in common our psychology and like there is a reason why people love these movies why they love yeah. horror movies is because they don't have to experience it themselves it gives them that adrenaline rush it gives them everything the serotonin everything that they need yeah you know, and to... it's controlled exactly it's controlled and they have mm-hmm. control over it they can pause it rewind it fast forward whatever they need to do they can cover their eyes like they don't have to face the true reality of that horror and mm-hmm. so I think that's also why I love this movie too is because the world is ending. I don't have to experience that. And then all of these animals and monsters and everything are getting out in the lab. You know, all of these things are happening and I just get to be a bystander, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. A voyeur. (laughs) A voyeur. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Yeah. A voyeur. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yes. Just watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of all the monsters, like truly, truly incredible, Uh, like such a highlight of this movie um and and also like deeply satisfying to yeah. watch all of these employees who are like making bets and like have fully orchestrated fucked the up. the deaths yeah. of these yeah. yeah like it's super fucked up and then it's like a very just desserts moment mm-hmm. especially yes. also shout out to the merman um <laughs> yes. because shout it's out just to the so merman. yeah that that part's so funny um I feel like there's not really that much that I find super gripey. The Same. one the one like thing that I'm always curious about is um like so what do we think the liquid is when they pull the levers mm-hmm. and like the liquid is like going through the um mm-hmm. the, the symbols of like the athlete, uh, the fool, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. So I used to be like, oh, it's it just gotta be blood. However, Marty doesn't die mm-hmm. and they pull the lever and then the the thing starts flowing and that's also the only one where when they pull the lever 
the whole like world shakes. There's like an earthquake that happens at that point. Hmm. Do we think that that's happening because Marty's not actually dead? And so the monsters are like mad that they're like, why'd you pull the lever too early? Like, what's that about kind of thing? That makes sense. And then what's the goo? Like, what's that stuff if like Marty's (laughs) not dead? So my interpretation of that is it's their blood or the blood of something. Um, And Marty, you can still... My my assumption is that it's still Marty's blood. Let's just say it's blood because he got injured. He right? he still was stabbed yeah, yeah. multiple yeah. times. They still use his blood, but he's not dead. So the dead the blood of someone who's still alive causes that kind of mm. like it didn't count. Like the mm-hmm. the entity is angry because they they know mm-hmm. the difference between dead blood and alive blood, or however you want to describe that as. <laughs> that's that's how I read it. Okay. Honestly, that makes complete sense to me. And I think, honestly, thinking back to when I first watched it, that's how I interpreted it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious because I never really yeah. thought about it yeah, until yeah, this yeah. time. And I was like, I was Wait. like, why, why does that happen? Mm-hmm. Like, he's not, I know that he's not dead because I've seen mm-hmm. this so many times. Right. Um, <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, that was really my only, my only gripe. Um, oh, also, shout out to the, uh, the Japanese girls who successfully, beat the evil um that yes. scene is also mm-hmm. so funny um and and also just like i like that very quick kind of reference to uh like j horror mm-hmm. that we get like mm-hmm. we're not spending mm-hmm. that much time on it but like it's just enough to get a taste oh, and yeah. still satisfy like that aspect and then oh, it's yeah. like all right back to all of the regular <laughs> other like horror that we're focusing on in right. this particular movie it's like right for uh, sure so mm-hmm. so good yeah mm-hmm. Love that. Yes. Any other likes, Jamie? Um, everything. (laughs) I yeah. I just I love I love this movie. Yay! Yeah. Happy. It's it's an incredible movie. Producer Brian, you're up. Give it to us. Sure. I'll go pretty quickly. I think this movie is perfect. Um, (laughs) I think it's wonderful. I saw it when it first came out because at the I because I love Joss Whedon. I love Firefly, Serenity. Mm. Obviously, he's problematic. Um, but, uh, at that time, I, I, his work still spoke for itself just like, and I was right. super excited when he wrote this. Um, right. and, uh, and so I went to see it. Um, I thought it was spectacular. I think this movie is, takes big, clever swings. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the transitions in this movie are great. I think the performances are great. Yeah. Um, uh, I, think this was my, I've seen it like maybe this is my third time seeing it. This was my favorite time watching it. Because even though I fully understood all of the in-jokes and the tropes and all of that the first two times, doing this podcast and actually watching, you know, I did not grow up watching slashers or anything like that. Uh, I grew up watching like the psychos, even though it's slasher, but like the more like, that's a bad example, but I, 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 I I grew (laughs) up watching Jaws, like the animal attack movies, but the psychological thrillers I love and ghost movies. Yes. Um, I love okay. all that stuff. I did. I I watched Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, Jason movies like all in the last like four years for the first time. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Like I, okay. I they just like as they and they I appreciate them more for historically what they do than enjoying them. Right. <clears throat> I think I think it's an, bouncing I, off of that really quick. I think I think I'm also kind of the same way. Like just their mark that they made in horror celebrating that while I'm watching it as opposed to like is it actually good versus bad it's more about like this movie made waves like for me you know what I Mm -hmm. mean like obviously I'm gonna think it's good Mm, you know Uh, Mm -hmm. but at the same time just that celebration of where it was in the timeline as far as movies go and how much it like broke the the glass ceiling for horror and like what we can do with horror and like how lighting does things, how this does, how prosthetics do things and how practical as effects and how a string on a violin can make someone feel, you know, like all mm-hmm. of those little things that make a movie, the cinematography to it and everything. I think that is why I love movies the most is all of the detail. Sure. And everything that goes into it. Yeah. And I think for that, sure. 
also if you tie nostalgia into all of that yeah like yes, i've been ha- sure. i've been really enjoying watching all of these movies that people have deep rooted nostalgia for mm-hmm. without nostalgia oh right so like i love 70s horror movies so i like the original halloween yeah. movies yes. because i just like like that feel i like yeah. early 80s movies because it feels mm-hmm. like late 70s right and stuff like that um uh, uh, but the point, the, my long belabored point is that this time was my favorite watching it because I've now informed myself of the Evil Dead movies mm, and all of that stuff. So gotcha. this was more fun to watch. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Very good movie. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. I think it adds. En- it doesn't add enough to, for me to enjoy it to to me understand it more. I should say, but it it adds enough for me to enjoy it more. So I liked all that. Um, I don't think this movie ever feels slow, which I think is really impressive. No. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. you're I, so right. I think that the script is just always working well. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie has rules, and it sets up those rules quickly, and it yep. follows those rules. Uh, yep. And I love, we love rules here on the podcast. We love rules. <laughs> love mm-hmm. rules. Um, I have one gripe. My one gripe is that the first shot we see of Dana when she's packing is she's in her underwear. And Uh, mm -hmm. I think that undercuts for me, what they're, who they are versus what they're going to eventually be stereotype wise. It sets a weird visual Mm -hmm. expectation immediately uh, out, you know, that she's in her underwear as opposed to just like packing um mm-hmm. i don't know why that bothered me maybe because i know what this movie ends up becoming so right. i kind of mm-hmm. wanted it to like unravel more um than mm-hmm. like immediately start with somebody without pants and then like and then and then they i i don't know there was something that just didn't feel it threw you off right in terms yeah. of how they want this screenplay and these characters to um progress and devolve maybe they they did that on purpose Maybe. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it does fit back into like she she's not she's yeah. not who they're trying to make her to be. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. this is just another example of like, you know, what what ideas are you conjuring up when you're when the start of your movie is like a woman like not wearing pants? Like mm-hmm. it's already kind of planting the seed in your yeah. brain. But right. then it is kind of like, again, because of the manipulation, <laughs> you're seeing her in a different light because that's what the movie wants you yeah, to see. Yeah, that's a good point. It just feels weird outside of the of the, the, of the right. house. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but that, that's wa- my only thing. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Aren't, if I remember correctly, aren't they watching them pack though? And like yeah. get, okay. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it's just like, they just control... Well, I don't know. I don't think they control anything mm-hmm. yet. They may have controlled like that well, these people they, booked this house and all of that stuff. But they did that okay. because yeah. they they somehow planted at the end. They make a comment that like uh, Chris Hemsworth didn't even have a cousin. They were supposed to be going to his cousin's house. That's where the cabin uh, is. Right. Mm-hmm. And right. then uh, uh, Marty's like, I don't even think he has a cousin. And like mm-hmm. they kind of joke to themselves <laughs> about mm-hmm. that. Yes. Um. But they there's also the comment uh, that the chemistry department messed with marty's weed yes. so they did some things yes. ahead of time sure but they can't like pump in the you know whatever stuff they're doing right. to manipulate right. them in gotcha. the moment but like gotcha. they are doing some things yeah yeah, yeah that's okay. fair um but uh yeah that that that's all i got for i i honestly i stopped taking notes like 10 minutes in because i was like <laughs> I, i'm just i'm just gonna enough. enjoy I it i just love this movie yeah, yeah. yeah. right yeah wait brian do you have your ticket stub uh, for this movie? Oh, I, I have to, let me, while you're doing, while you're starting the next segment, so spoiler alert, yes. while you're starting the next segment, <laughs> oh. um, let me see if I can find it. Ooh. Yeah, because Brian always has, has him at the ready if he's seen it in mm-hmm. theaters. He's like, here's oh my, God, my that's ticket amazing. Stuff. Yeah, let the me whole go. binder. Let me check. A whole binder. All right. Oh well, let's get into our next segment. Mmm, brains. Uh, mm. Tasty. Mm. Yes. Brains. <laughs> Jamie, my first question to you has to deal with um, peer pressure. So we see a lot of peer pressures in like teenage movies and stuff. So my Mm -hmm. question to you is, why do you think peer pressure is used so much as a tactic amongst teenagers and not necessarily like adults? And, you know, why do people even like peer pressure in the first place? Like what is what is what do you think is their kind of end game (laughs) and goal in that? 
yeah the psychology good question good yes. question yes yeah <laughs> all right. we I found to it over here i talked i found, oh, you it. found your you found, oh, your you found it stuff. fantastic yeah. oh my God. i saw it at the amc in east hanover new jersey at 1 p.m on wednesday the 18th of april 20 um 2012 Oh, because oh. I was looking at the release info, and it said that uh, blah 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 blah. It was released in the U.S. on April thirteenth, twenty twelve. Uh, even though it, I think it first premiered in twenty eleven. Mm, okay, mm. okay, okay, okay. Oh, gotcha. well. Anyway, that's gotcha, that's gotcha. when I saw it between. Uh, you saw it at one p.m. on a Wednesday. <laughs> I saw it at one you. p.m. on a Wednesday. Lunchtime, just wow. a lunchtime. Viewing. Yeah, just. <laughs> Real quick. Yeah, I saw it. Take a break and go watch this more movie. Uh Uh Mm -hmm. Before and then the next movie I saw was uh, because I have yeah this came out the same year as Avengers so I guess this Mm. technically came out after Thor. No, no, no. Uh, This 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 came out after Thor Mm -hmm. technically. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um. So uh, they knew. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. That is so interesting. Mm -hmm. Ah. But yes, Jamie, please give us all yes. the info on on. So we want to know about the the receiving the pressure, but also the pressurer. Yes, and yes. like what's going on there. I mean, yes. I think that like within like with young people, um, and anyone else can chime in on this. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm I'm I was a young person. I'm no longer a young person. <laughs> uh, but like it makes me think a lot about uh, like identity formation being such mm-hmm. a crucial part of that time period um and like who am i but also like how other people are perceiving me and not that that necessarily stops into like those are questions that i am still currently asking myself Mm -hmm. as a not like adolescent anymore but i think that that's the beginnings of that and so like this the the need to conform and like be perceived a certain type of way or like how do i want people to see me yeah or mm-hmm. like being popular like right. feels so much more important because it's also connected back to how other people perceive me and like yeah. popularity being seen as this like really positive mm-hmm. perception right. um so i feel like i feel like that's that's part of why that tactic feels so impactful and effective um when you're younger i also think like on the flip side pressure people pressuring or young people pressuring like similarly don't necessarily want to do certain things alone um and so there is like comfort in numbers um i think that there's like you know some i guess like yeah i was thinking more about like comfort in numbers it it kind of made me think about in adulthood like what does this look like and it made me think about right. like group think oh yeah. a little bit um just like again there's this pressure to maybe invalidate or dismiss or like minimize your own concern about things Mm -hmm. in order to like go along with a group, whether the group is like explicitly trying to pressure you into Mm -hmm. that belief system or not. But like, there's still some, there's still some like pressure that's like compelling us to participate in something. So I feel like it's not entirely like peer pressuring isn't done, you know, once we graduate or whatever, but like, I think it just might look differently in yeah as we get older but yeah i feel like there's a lot around like just identity formation and and um the the need this compulsion to fit in that like makes it so impactful when when we are younger right i think that's great because that also kind of relates into our social media world as well (sighs) how people are thinking and (laughs) Mm -hmm. for sure and looking to others to get validation uh, yes. from things, or even if you feel a certain way about something and you go on social media and see some people feel the opposite way, uh-huh. that can kind of like change, you know, oh, for your, sure. your perception of things, which is, no, absolutely. yeah. And think about like young people using social media, which is like oh, right. the worst thing the worst. Yeah, <laughs> and just how worst. much it like, there's like, now we have, I mean, it's so awful, but like we have research now mm-hmm. to indicate like the negative impact that social media has on right. young brains right. um, yes. and like just, you know, what, what people are walking away from after using some of these apps. And so like, yeah, I think that it's, it's now taken like the peer pressure to like this huge scale yeah. and it's, it like the, the self-comparison is just like, Ugh. inescapable oh, in, yeah. in so many ways. And again, like that's something that absolutely is hitting adults as well. This is right. like not, Big not time. exclusive to young people, For but sure. I think that 
young people might not necessarily have like the 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 fully formed brains uh-huh. and like capacity to recognize What's hey happening. this is actually really harmful for me yeah. yeah and like i can i need to step away from this like this doesn't make me feel good anymore right um right. Step so like away that's... from the app oh, yeah. yeah oh my god and i wish that my strange... apps would tell me that <laughs> oh yeah right i mean because it's, it's literally just strangers who would never say these things to no. your face or in public mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. right. so but for a young developing mind you know you're not thinking that you're thinking it's just a, a direct attack on you for sure and yeah it's it's hard to kind of separate yourself like you said from right. sure. what's happening online mm-hmm. to like who you are as as a person yeah. Um, not even just the bad things. Also, yeah. like just the yeah. like, you know, I, I, be, I get envious when I like, I follow a lot of travel influencers. And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. I want to go to all these places. Why can't I? Right. And then like, I feel yeah. like crap, because I'm comparing myself to like right. them. But like, why am I you know, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> why am I poor? If I, get, if I get one more video, that's like, here was my experience fly- flying business class to Japan. I'm gonna I'm going to all under scream. all under five grand. And you're like, yeah. OK, sure. Yeah, that's but still four thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars yeah. <laughs> that I don't have. Right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, but absolutely. like, yeah, it's even the positive thing, like, po- you know, in quotes, mm-hmm. but like mm-hmm. the things that I desire and want. It's not just mm-hmm. like people who are going out of their way to make me feel bad. But like I now am doing that work all, all on my own, all, all by myself. Own. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. because of how that stuff is being presented. But right. sorry, Ashley, you were saying something. No, I was just going to piggyback off exactly what you were saying coming from just a different angle. But then we also, you know, as we dive deeper into that, we're also looking at what is this child experiencing at home and why do they feel mm. the deep desire to people please? Where is this mm. coming from? You know, mm-hmm. I was just going to say that there's also like those deeper connections that that falls into place with as well but I think like just speaking from experience like definitely uh like cigarettes were like a huge thing like you know for for me in like middle school and high school and stuff and like it was honestly the reason why I indulged very much in cigarettes but you know it was like that peer pressure of like I'm gonna look like such a loser if I don't do this and like I really want friends or Or I do the right thing and I stick up for myself, but then I'm going against the flow and then that just makes me annoying. And then like it literally Mm -hmm. starts this tumbleweed effect of like how you're not going to be perceived as easygoing, cool or all of this, you know, a people pleaser essentially. That's where the people pleasing starts. Like really, Mm -hmm. honestly, Mm -hmm. if we're Mm -hmm. telling the truth, absolutely. As a people pleaser, that's where it was. (laughs) Gosh, dang it. Should have known. Yeah, because you feel like you're not enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so that's when all the inner conflict is right. is happening. And so you're mm-hmm. seeking the validation. And the only reason the only reason you're getting the validation is because you're doing something that you might not necessarily do, but what others are validating as good. Right. So right. then you're receiving that as like, this is how I have to be. Right. If people are going to like me, like I have mm-hmm. to do these things that people want from me. Exactly. Or me, you know? Exactly. And then mm-hmm. yeah being a content creator and someone who has been working in social media for 10 years um it's it's hard it's it yeah it still kind of gets to me even though I know that that's what the tactic is it is I know what I'm facing I know what I'm looking at and I know these emotions are starting to rise up inside of me and I know like this is exactly what they want to happen to you right um Mm -hmm. it's still Mm -hmm. it's still hard to not get that way sometimes, but I definitely think that is the beauty of growing older is realizing how you sit in your confidence and how like Mm. you're celebrating yourself and you're more just aware and you're happy and you're like, you know what? It feels good to be where I'm at and I don't want to be anybody else because I've worked so hard to cover up that person that Mm. now, you know, I get to be my authentic self and kind of going into that. And I don't mean to interrupt like any part of the segment whatsoever, but that is why I fell in love with horror was because I was a, I was a kid and I would watch it with my friend and like my friend, it (sighs) wasn't the most popular. My friend wasn't the most popular and, but I would watch these movies with them. Nightmare on Elm Street was the first movie that I ever saw like as a horror movie as a kid. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was it was just like, oh, people are going to think I'm so weird. People are going to think I'm so creepy. 
And so I would totally fight against the things that I enjoyed. And I tried to just be someone that I wasn't. And when I got older and I like graduated high school and like even college, I was like, what did I do that for? Mm -hmm. Why did I do that? I hate that I wasn't able to celebrate myself um, authentically and I wasn't able to just be me. And that's when I was like, nope, screw it. Like, you know, I'm getting orange in my hair, tattoos. I'm doing everything I wanted to do as a kid that I didn't do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, absolutely. There's a quote that I heard. It was like, being in your 30s is like getting to be 13 year old you again without judgment. And I'm like, that is Ooh, literally that's exactly, exactly it. what it <laughs> that's is. That's exactly it. And that's why I love horror because as a kid, I watched <laughs> yes. it. You know, as a kid, I watched it and like horror, like it's me telling myself, like, you get to be yourself. And horror definitely celebrates that. Yes. Peace and love. Peace and love. Celebrations. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Celebrations oh, all I around. That it does that. Yeah. Oh, Brian doesn't want to And you have the adult money. Yeah, so you can want. really like go ham. Oh my God. Nikisha, your screen is like <laughs> doing all of this. It was doing two things at once. <laughs> it got confused. <laughs> I was trying to celebrate what Ashlina was saying. <laughs> I love it. That was funny. Yes. No, but that's that's totally true. It's like you get more of, a, of an understanding the more that your brain has developed be, mm -hmm. because you've gotten older, you know, mm -hmm. and you just realize mm -hmm. it's like, to your point, Ashley, enough, life is short. So let yeah. me just celebrate how I want to celebrate. Let me buy the things. If it if it seems weird and creepy, I know who I am. Right. People exactly. might think I can probably hide a body, but you know, that's kind of cool for them to think <laughs> right. that. Even though I wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> right. But because I watch horror movies, be scared of like, me a little bit. Yeah. Just yeah. A little. I think you'd be good at hiding a body. <laughs> that is a great, that is the best compliment. <laughs> I'll help. To me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Yeah. The heavy lifting. The, right. You know, um, I'll do it all. all. The, like all the boxing. I would really, I would, I would call you. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I will be at your service, yeah. Jamie. I would no, do that absolutely. for you. And <laughs> fantastic that's so sweet oh my god thank you yes <laughs> i wouldn't do it for everybody but i do it for you yes it's true, true that's true. fair yeah true good point <laughs> okay so my next question is kind of like similar in the realm of, of how you see yourself but i wanted to ask uh from a psychology standpoint just mm -hmm. how and or why do you think social groups and stereotypes uh are, are made in the first place, you know, the jock, the geek, the popular person, the band nerd, whatever. Like, do you think there's something that the film industry just kind of really capitalized on and made people see and form? Or do you think mm. that it's something that just has organically happened, um, maybe via, you know, economic things and mm -hmm. social classes and, and stuff? But I just would love to hear your opinion on that. And why you think we don't see that as much within our youth today, mm -hmm. even within like our um, movie groups, uh, right. movies today. The Cause I'm thinking movies. of like the, the mean yeah. girls like reboot. Yeah. I didn't see mm -hmm. it. Right. Sorry. But I just I think, I think <laughs> that it was more, <laughs> well, yeah, I think it was more <laughs> inclusive. I would like to say as far as like, even though there might have been different social groups, gotcha. it's not like we've seen in mm -hmm. the past. Mm -hmm. Right. And honestly, this was my going to be my question to you, Jamie, as well, the the tropes and everything. So please, yeah. I, I would love yeah. to hear your thoughts. No, I mean, it is interesting because I, I kind of do feel like there is something similar happening now. Obviously, I'm not I'm – not like 10 years old anymore so like <laughs> not from firsthand experiences but I think just based on like both like things on social media that I'm seeing and also like anecdotes from people I've talked to but I do think that there's still like I, I think a lot about like the 10 year olds at Sephora oh. and how there's like oh. the pressure mm. to like you know be a part of this thing and like that's coming from older generations because like my understanding is that that's coming from like Alex Earl kind of vibe mm. on TikTok, who's like mm. a like a top TikToker who right. also is like an influencer and does mm. a lot of makeup stuff. But like these 10 year olds are consuming this like, you know, 20 something Media. year olds yeah. content. Yeah. yeah. And like that's and so then there's the pressure of like, well, what if I don't get my kid the, like the the retinol from Sephora, which like <laughs> that Lord. even just that blows my mind. It makes me want to um, Yeah. It's yeah. like toe curling. It's awful. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh but I do like – so that's what I feel like is happening now in terms of like historically. I mean I do feel like a lot of it has to do with like 
socioeconomics and yes. um and like class and mm-hmm. I think that things have just like evolved based on you know the context like we we see these things in the school these are also things that like we might have experienced when we were in school yeah, and like sure. seeing that and so it's like it doesn't even you, you might think that it's things that are only happening to adults but it's not it's like playing out like in in school in the mm-hmm. lunchroom all of these things so I feel like the tropes are are probably again like social commentary mm-hmm. on things that are real and like exist and are kind of just like classifying them in different ways obviously we don't yet have horror movies about 10 year olds at sephora buying retinol but like (laughs) maybe in five years we will like again who knows but like Mm -hmm. i think i i imagine that like you know like we said before about like what horror as a entire genre is often do is often making commentary like i imagine that that's it's just pulling from like Uh, we might see it in different ways Mm -hmm. and they're just kind of categorizing it in these particular ways in, in these tropes, not even just horror. Like you said, mean girls, Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, like any, I could like, does, I feel like Days and Confused even does this. Like, I'm just thinking about like movies that feature like different groups, uh, like stereotypical social archetypes in movies, uh, that usually take place in like schools and yeah, like that's yes. where you're seeing them in younger people True. but like this is not just young people we're seeing it also in like adulthood right. and other things so like that's my guess is that that's like the the movie way of kind of highlighting and like tropifying these existing classes mm-hmm, um right. that we're seeing and just like playing it out in in these different kinds of ways that's that's my guess i i don't imagine that like movies necessarily came up with these things and then yeah. i also am assuming that like you know because we're then seeing it in the movies it's like reinforced in reality so it's yeah, kind of like cyclical yeah. yeah 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 also isn't the quote something like life is just high school with money like yeah uh, that's honestly, that's deeply upsetting yeah that makes me want to <laughs> i don't cry. like that yeah, yeah i mean <laughs> i hate that i mean mm-hmm. to me Boo. like it's just movies are just observation and they just simplify mm-hmm. it like jamie said right. so like yeah. some screenwriter wrote something that like the breakfast club is the perfect example yeah of yes. like that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I think that all of that happens it's obviously socioeconomic like these the, it's built that way but mm-hmm. also <laughs> most groups come from defining groups comes from another group that didn't like them mm-hmm. or or yes, that wouldn't so let them true. in or they were alienated it's not like self-identified them. like yeah. often i do mm. i i will say that i think that they're like that makes me think of like uh uh like person-centered language mm-hmm. or um uh like things like that where it's like people people owning things for themselves and deciding yeah. how they want to be identified but like yeah. it's we're in 2024 and that's like now the conversation so i agree yeah. with you where it's you brian where it's like other people are making comments about other people and like putting those labels on them and like they don't they might not necessarily feel like that's how they identify so and they're like, gonna go over here and make their own yeah kind of, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah yeah and yeah. clicks mm-hmm. and groups and definitions and all of that stuff have only gotten more complicated with social media Uh-oh. more complex yeah. as well yeah Just like the complexity yeah. of it Absolutely. yeah i i would say the complexity of the context is different but like oh, from yeah. a fundamental mm-hmm. level it's still the same lonely people for sure for <laughs> sure i don't mean that in a mm-hmm. sad way i mean that in like a growing up I mean, figuring out who sad, you are though. No, I mean, it's you're right, though. You're right. It's uh, because, like I said, at the root of all of this, what's happening at home? Where is this mm-hmm. coming from? Sure. You know, because in psychology, we talk a lot about that. I mean, like uh, when you're growing up and your your brain is forming and all of these things are happening around you, it's going to shape how you look at the world, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, it, it goes back to that. And, and, and here we talk into, you know, even the situation of the tropes but also bullying and like why do these people bully in these tropes and why do they Mm -hmm. make fun of these other tropes and like all of this other stuff it's because there's like a deep-rooted like psychological issue you know so yeah but yeah no I this movie it's so it's so fun how they explore the tropes and like obviously they try to make it so funny but it's Mm -hmm. also so interesting how we're able to dive deep and be like why did they do that yeah how did they make this happen how did we understand it? It's because we've been through it. We've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Right. 
and I, I mean, they have these like very basic labels um, of like who right. these characters are, but mm-hmm. and we like so immediately we are like, oh, yep, that's that one, that's yep. that one. Like we we're even doing it. Uh, like exactly. yeah, we do understand it. Exactly. And I would even argue that the comedy aspects are from the um, <clears throat> from the work side, and the other stuff is just clever and mm-hmm. not as funny and it's more like you're giggling because of the meta comedy to it right. whereas the genuine like laughs come from um the other side yeah the right. bradley whitford and and, mm-hmm. and richard jenkins mm-hmm. and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah 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 hmm. this is all fantastic mm-hmm. good stuff guys yeah good well, stuff. should we rotten to mountain this yeah let's rotten to mountain yeah. this rotten to all right. Right. Let's do it. Mm. Let's do it. Bridgerton. Here we go. <laughs> it's the Rotten Tomatoes game. What... Switching courses. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the Cabin in the Woods has on Rotten Tomatoes? Um, Nikisha, let's start with you. 93. Interesting. Ooh. Jamie? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go high, too. I'm going to say 98. All right. Ashlina? <sighs> uh, okay. I don't know the number, but I know that it did well. I'll just say that. But I don't know the number. Um, I'm going to say... We're just guessing. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I'm going to say 90. Because I, I remember it doing, like, decent. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say 90. So it's a 92. Okay. Ooh. So if we're playing closest to Nikisha wins, if we're playing Price is Right rules, Ashlina wins. Yeah. And we play Price is Right mm-hmm. rules here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the audience score is much lower at 74%, which is oh, interesting. Really? Oh, wow. Wow. Um, but the okay. critics' consensus. Right. I know, right? Come on, bro. <laughs> uh, but horror. I mean, they always freaking do this. I know. Yeah. Uh, the critics' consensus is the cabin in the woods is an astonishing meta feat, capable of being funny, strange, and scary, frequently all at the same time. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, mm, that's like, like well, then score it higher then. That's yeah. <laughs> well, that's the critics already gave it a ninety-two. Oh, oh, oh sure. I thought okay. that was. The, I thought that was the. Oh no, um, no, that's the critics' like oh, okay, outline. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to Letterboxed. What do you think this has? Again, Letterboxd is uh, out of five with decimal points. Um, so, Nikisha, what do you think this has on Letterboxd? I'm going to still go high and say 4.2. All right. <gasps> Jamie? Did I steal it? <laughs> no, I was going to say 4.1. <laughs> I didn't want to, like, <laughs> undercut you. That's all good. <laughs> uh, Hi. Ashlina? I'm going to do a 4.7. Ooh. That feels right. I don't know. Nice. It's probably wrong, but it's fine. So this has a 3.4. Oh, really? What? Yeah. Which what is... are people thinking? I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. Is Letterboxd worse than Rotten Tomatoes? I thought Rotten Tomatoes was like, no, no Letterbox. I mean, Letterboxd is, is, this is surprising because people usually like it, but Letterboxd is just like regular people, regular schmegular people. Oh. Um, well, we're not regular schmegular, if I can be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wild to me. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Much. Okay. Any good comments? Uh, the popular reviews aren't great. Why does Marty look like the human version of Shaggy from Scooby Doo? That's the point. <laughs> um, uh, right. They just didn't get it. Yeah. yeah right. They just didn't get it. Yeah. That's fine. The and number. That's fine. The number one liked review <laughs> says. Seeing Richard Jenkins yell fuck you to a screen filled with nine-year-old Japanese schoolgirls is extremely funny to me. This is the most fun I've had watching a film this year. Oh. Okay. okay. These yeah. are not as enter- right. these are not as entertaining as they usually are. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the more contemporary movies really brings out the best in people. I was gonna mm-hmm. say, go to the, go to YouTube and watch the trailer and then read those comments. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee well, yeah. yeah, YouTube is a better. Well, <laughs> I, I, I do love seeing a bong as a weapon. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that you can buy that bong cup. I've definitely oh, like seen really? it online. It's the original somewhere. Stanley. Yes. What? Oh, 
Oh my god. <laughs> Brian, get out. Oh, get out oh of my here. God. <laughs> get out of here. Um, Cut that I'm out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's move on to Yes. <laughs> the four S's. Yes. Skull, scare, shakes, and suggestions. The talking horns, four S's. <laughs> For those of you listening for the first time, or if you've just forgotten, uh, the four S's are skulls, scares, shakes, and suggestions. We're going to rate skulls one through ten. How well does this handle handle human behavior and mental health? Scares one through ten. How scary is it? And then shakes. How is it going to stay with you? Are you going to shake it off, or, or are you going to keep uh, thinking about it? That's also one through ten. We'll stop there, and then we'll go around the horn and do our suggestions. Um, Jamie, why don't you start us off with your numbers? Sure thing. These might be wild compared to what I'm normally giving. And mm-hmm. I'm like, yes, I know I'm biased because I love this movie, but like, mm-hmm. I do believe this. Okay. So for skulls, I'm giving this an eight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. And I think I gave it such a high score because like, I think part of it is there's really effective manipulation happening, right. but also there's still like a lot of critical thinking that's happening. Yeah. And then on top of that, you have like, you know, these very like exaggerated, but like mostly realistic interactions in a workplace that like, I just feel like a, a lot, again, it's like both grounded, but also like meta and like funny, but there's just like a lot of what feels really real yeah, in yeah, this. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So that's why I scored it so high. Uh, for scares, I gave it a four. Um, mostly cause I, I think some of the monsters are like really disturbing and creepy. I think like mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff that happens in the cabin is definitely scary. Um, there's some jump scares, uh, but, um, but yeah, it's not like the scariest movie right, of all time. Right. For um, sure. For shakes, I'm giving this movie a nine. This movie is a great movie. I know, I know. Well, That's why no, I prefaced it. I say that because Jamie, those are my exact same. Wait, scores. really? Oh my god, that's so. And I don't think funny. that's ever happened. No, I don't think we've ever had the same exact thing. Oh my god, you said oh, eight four wild. nine. Because eight four nine. Yeah, that's me, baby. Bingo, oh my god. Yahtzee. Oh my god, bingo. <laughs> Woohoo! That's so, so funny. Mine's an eight, funny. mine's an eight three ten. Interesting. Oh, good. Okay. Yes, that's there very we, close. Mine's because, eight yes. five eight. Eight. This five, is still eight, very. Eight. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, wow. wow. Did we just really? become best friends? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very same brain. We're all sharing the same brain cell right now. Oh, yeah. It's really no. That just means us. that we have this just the same understanding of this movie and like, exactly we just need to watch it together. I think is what. I think that's yeah. what I'm Yeah. <laughs> A movie night. Yes. Yeah. Obsessed. This just is a movie that, like, if someone's like, hey, what movie should I watch? If I'm getting into horror for the first time, like... I was literally just about to say this, Brian. <laughs> this is the perfect mm-hmm. intro to horror movie that you can show your friends that, like, aren't mm-hmm. into horror that actually gets them to understand what's happening. They, they're they like, oh, so there's tropes in this movie, too. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. exploring mm-hmm. comedy that can also exist within horror. It's and and there's the jump scares and like the blood and the gore. Like it literally yeah. mm-hmm. has everything to introduce you to the genre. Brian, I did not mean to interrupt you, but I was literally just no, it's just okay. I mean, this was yeah. just gonna be like this would always be on my horror comedy list, and I oh for sure. And the cool thing is, you can watch it before you watch any other ones, mm-hmm. and you can watch it yeah. after you watch all the other ones. It, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter; you'll get different things out of it, but it yeah. still holds holds together because right? it's a well. Yeah made movie regardless yeah. of what you, yeah of what i think we need a tiktok of here are the top five movies to watch as intro into yeah Ooh. Yes, that's such a good idea that's so good so brian oh i'll God. delegate that to you yes <laughs> that's hard i have to do different I can ones with that if y'all ever yes yeah yeah anything. i think you'd need to separate it by like genre so I there. would say I would say Scream is another intro to horror. In oh, definitely yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would so, say absolutely. Scream is. I would say th- Jaws that for Animal Attack, oh, Jaws. God, for, Jaws terrified me. But oh, I, oh, God. but then like you have, I think you have to watch the Mount Rushmores. You have to watch the mm-hmm. like Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, mm-hmm. the original Friday the Thirteenth, um, mm-hmm. the original Child's Play, and so like uh, um, what's the other one? Uh, um check to texas chain so i'm asking you what you want to watch all those oh. at least the first ones of all those and then based yeah. on what you like 
then you keep going forward with that franchise. Like, see, I I would never recommend Texas Chainsaw Massacre to anyone trying to get into horror because that oh, interesting. It's it's terrifying. Like, are you in the <laughs> yes. the fact that it's based off Ed Gein, you know, and yeah. all of his crimes and stuff like that? Like, I don't. Um, I don't maybe I would recommend it in the sense of they never show him actually like sawing off any body parts so you're not getting that factor of what shock factor but mm. I feel like it's still absolutely terrifying when I think okay and this maybe this is where the difference is when I think of intro to horror I think of comedy mixed in so that they're able to not be as scared yeah so fair. friday the 13th yeah. i think that's a great one because freddie is just he's you know yeah ridiculous. it depends oh how God. old yeah. you are when he's running because, down the because uh, the... that's not <laughs> well that's yeah i i actually agree with what you're saying brian because when i watched that i watched that when i was too young and that's why like sleep things and like oh, already having chronic nightmares right. like really so, freaks me out so you all... but like i also mm. i love it now but at the yeah. time it was like, oh, oh my god, I can never me. sleep. But that's yeah. a good Again. point. What does intro mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, are we talking true. about like growing up and finding these movies? And I, right. I also mm. think that, I also think that self discovery of horror is mm. more is 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 the most important. Uh, for like, sure. like in a you know friend's yeah. basement and finding the random VHS they right. have. You know, right. like that's not the ring, but like and finding <laughs> you know like like for instance, we was what we see, um, uh, uh. What was the movie we saw? Death Pool. What was the bad movie we saw this year? Oh, swim. Uh, something pool. What, no. Night swim. Night swim. Yeah. Oh my Night god. Night swim. Oh, okay. Like okay. that movie yes. was god Death awful. Pool. But is it really? if I found that movie in a when I was twelve in a basement right. and like the swim fan swim fan. I mean Night Swim <laughs> was on VHS, like like that would like like you i feel like self discovery is important or like mm. you like it's not that, like i mean back when we were younger it was going to blockbuster and just picking the cover yes. that looked interesting but yes. now it's like scrolling through netflix and looking in the I horror section and see so i think as much as you suggest like there's something and, and it goes to what you were saying too ashley in a like it's about like as you're growing up and figuring out who you are and like yeah, finding you're the right. things that you like on your own because like yeah you're I right. grew up listening to the Beatles and and all that because my parents listened and I love them but like I think the first time that I listened to a band and felt like that I created my own opinion was mm -hmm. probably like buying Tragic Kingdom and listening to <laughs> like No Doubt No Doubt like right. that was the first mm -hmm. time I was like this sound is interesting I mm -hmm. think I'm having my own opinion on music. Like, right. I feel like that's part the right. horror specifically as a genre is like, there's so many sub genres. It's about like finding your own voice through it. If that oh, makes yeah. sense. I don't oh, know. Yeah. And it's For like, sure. it's mm -hmm. also when we ask our friends, like, Ooh, which movie scared you the most, you know? And for me, like psychological horror will always by far be the scariest to me. <laughs> oh because, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, so I think you're, you're totally right. I, I didn't even think about it that way. Being young versus being an adult and like, uh, yeah. <laughs> this would be an adult intro as opposed yeah. to a kid right. intro. Yeah. Well, a kid shouldn't even watch this movie, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> for sure. Versus, yeah, I don't yeah. know. There's a, I feel like there's a lot of factors in there, but uh, mm -hmm. um, cool. Yeah. But let, th this is a great segue into suggestions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So I'll go first. My suggestion um, is a Tucker and Dale versus evil. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You took one of mine. So <laughs> I'll, I'll just, oh. I'll stick with Tucker and Dale. It's a per it's another perfect horror comedy. I haven't seen it in a yeah. while. I wonder if it still holds up, but it's a great horror comedy. And I think that Tucker and Dale versus Evil requires more of an understanding of horror movies than this one does. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. but I think so. still, still a plus stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Jamie, say your other one then, since he took yours. I mean, it's so obvious. As a major Evil Dead fan, I can't mm. not recommend yeah. the Evil Dead Screaming. movies. Oh, um, yes. I mean, this is literally called the. We can't forget the article. The yeah. Cabin uh -huh. in the Woods. Right. Yeah. Um, it's literally based so in a cabin in the woods yes. that is just yes. like Evil Dead, which I just recently. Evil Dead um, was, I watched that for the first time two years ago. Oh my God. Absolutely in love. And like an yeah. ash to an ash. I'm just obsessed. Yes. I'm so obsessed. Yes. Um, and I was actually going to mention 
you spoke about uh nikisha you talked about title cards and i will never get yeah. over evil dead rise title card. oh that's a good title oh yeah card. we loved yeah. that yes mm -hmm. oh my god yes, so yes i just yes. speaking of like that whole like realm and everything, there is but, nothing so, better sure. than a horror movie title card oh there's nothing yeah. better. there so, you're, yeah. you're so right Mm -hmm. You're so, right. so and good. Even the one. pearl uh -huh. one, yes. the pearl <laughs> yes. one is good. Yes. The barbarian yes. one is spectacular. It, yeah, right. yeah. Is. When she crosses yeah, the threshold like, uh, and like yeah. that's the start. Fresh, yeah. watcher. Fresh. Oh, fresh. Oh yeah. My God, fresh was good. That was like what, like thirty minutes into yeah. the movie, like something wild. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, one of my favorites. Like, Did they forget? Was, yeah. <laughs> right. When is this gonna happen? Okay, got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Ashley, you know, what's your suggestion? Um, scary movie. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> oh my god. So, <laughs> so scary good. I Love. scary movie actually ruined Scream for me because I can't watch <laughs> really? Scream. Oh I can't god. I watch Scream and I'm what like, where's that? Doofy? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Doofy. Like, doesn't he drop? Oh yeah. Like, god. yeah. I I oh. I can't not. It's it's it's. I love it. No, I it's love it. So good, <laughs> man. Yeah. And yes. we rewatched Scary Movie recently. Like sixty percent of it holds up, and but the forty that doesn't is is like oh, is, is like whoa, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Bad. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real and bad. I rewatched the second one fairly mm -hmm. recently. Kind of felt similarly, and I really want to give the third one a go because that's the one that has the ring yes and yes. i forget what the other one oh signs uh -huh. are like two yeah. of the ones featured in Honestly, that so the... i wanted to they're making a new one yeah oh yeah i heard about that oh my yeah. god they're like what what do you do now uh -huh. they're reaching for nostalgia 1000 oh yeah for sure yeah for sure Mm -hmm. Like they want to get us with the nostalgia and like, they will like our butts us... yeah. in the seats oh, and yeah. the, you know and the, and the uh win. Oh yeah, that you know, like midsummer and like hereditary are gonna be somewhere. Uh, oh, for oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's gonna be a takedown of like quote elevated horror. Is my I answer. hope so. That yeah. would be really funny to me. Oh yeah, yes. Definitely. Not that I don't love those movies because obviously I do, but it's just like right. this. Now it's become this whole like thing that yeah. I think is kind of gross. It's like, can we just like enjoy? horror movies because we love horror movies right. like why does it have to right. be like elevated right like well right if it's good as good you like it you like it like that's it yeah. you know what i mean like, no exactly <laughs> yeah exactly that's so funny mm. uh well my suggestion is within the realm uh a new nightmare because okay. it's like Ooh. the making of a horror sure meta. i don't think i've uh, seen that so it's I so Add it to the list. It's like Wes mm -hmm. Craven galore, oh, good things. Oh like God, it's literally yes. scream before mm -hmm. scream. Okay, which gotcha. number yep. is it? Gotcha. Is it number the five. five or six? I think it's six because okay. isn't uh, uh it's, it's dream oh, kid? You're right. You're right. It's uh, <laughs> it's Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh -huh. uh, Return. uh Ret Freddy returns or whatever it is. Yeah. Then it's Dream Warriors. Then it's the two children one. And yeah, then yeah. it's New Nightmare, right? That's yeah, what. That's yeah, when yeah. I stopped watching. Yeah, New Nightmare is yeah. real good. New Nightmare, but New is Nightmare, really good. okay, fantastic. A one, mm -hmm. stay one, okay. for sure. All right, I great. I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna have to add that to my yes. list. Honestly, I took kind of like a little bit of a backseat watching horror movies because, like, I would realize, oh, I've been sitting on the couch all day. I didn't do anything you know <laughs> like i forgot to do my chores so that's why like i just sat down and i watched um i watched four horror movies this weekend it was amazing but that's why i watched Ooh. x um pearl. And, pearl. Oh, and pearl yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then there was a shutter one that i watched and it was so good i loved i was like i liked that more than i oh um night no living the night uh he does the talk show Oh, oh, late, late night, night with, with the, the devil. devil. Yes. Late night yeah, with the yeah, devil. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was uh -huh. like, I actually mm -hmm. like enjoyed that more than I thought I was going sure. to. Sure. Yeah. Um, that was a good time. Yeah. There's another one too that I watched. But anyways, sorry, that was a complete yeah. side. No, I would. Well, no, we it's, always want to know. It's what called, called talking horror. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. True. We're talking all the horror. It's also a new nightmare. Is the seventh one. So it's it's Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy's Revenge, Dream Warriors, The Dream Master, The Dream Child, The Final Nightmare, New Nightmare, Freddy versus Jason, and the remake. Yeah, you lost me. Like, yeah, no, I. If I, oh my God, I don't know. It's so wild. The thing for me too is, and this is like, I'm just being completely honest. 
like the Halloween movies. Like we could have stopped a while ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though it's my favorite, like I can mm-hmm. still admit, like we should have. It gets stopped. ridiculous. Yeah. Like H two O. Like that was like four. You could have stopped at four. Like let's be honest, you know. But like yeah. So I can't admit How- that. Yeah. Very much. Friday the Thirteenth is by far the best of the franchises. Okay. Uh, Hold on yeah. a second. By f- interesting. By f- because they're. Your those are fighting words. I feel like they're bonkers. <laughs> they're actual sequels. They're bonkers, and they lean into the bonkersness. Into it being. Crazy. I mean, the one, You're the right, Jason though. versus Carrie, is definitely one of my favorites. That's an amazing film. Jason which lives. One is that one? Jason lives is the sixth one, um, which is oh, is that one seven? I think the one that you're talking about is seven. Yeah, um, and then the one where he goes to Manhattan is okay, also but wild. The space one, did you like the space? Jason one? X oh is a God, masterpiece. Jason X is a masterpiece. <laughs> It's okay. one of my favorite movies. Like, we, like all, we, we all just got out of our seat. Uh, <laughs> we did. Okay, I'll give it a rewatch. I'll give it oh a rewatch. Oh my God. Because I watched it forever ago and I was like, ugh. Maybe, maybe I need to be just older to appreciate it. No, it's, it. a, it's, a, it's so bad that it like is. you have to have fun yeah. movie. Yes. It's yeah. not a... I, I, will, I will shout from the rooftops that I love this movie, but not because it's a good no, movie. No, 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 exactly. no. By it's any fun, means. Because it's fun. It's fun, it's silly, and it just like takes this concept and then just like goes literally to the just most outrageous right. uh right. yeah like yeah. oh now we need to put the the slasher the right. uh, like unkillable slasher in space yeah okay, okay. why it's great. it's great i guarantee you there was a joke a horror <laughs> fan made a joke oh i bet jason couldn't survive space and they're like oh want to bet and then they like took the movie or whatever but yeah I, I i'm 85 percent sure that's right I, I watched it i think i watched it when i like wanted to be scared and then i wasn't mm. and i was like oh, oh yeah disappointed. that so if you want to be definitely scared not the movie but, if, no. if you want to no. actually be scared the friday the 13th franchise is not the franchise to do it yeah. right. it is just a bonkers crazy like i will say though it's like so wild. okay first of all number one i've met kane hodder and oh cool. my <gasps> god I, that's very cool i was shaking and funny story <laughs> in the second picture that we took together i asked him if he could like pretend he was killing me i know that sounds really weird <laughs> and like you know, i'm, I'm sure he gets it all the uh, time okay right but like i think back on it i'm like god ash like you're so weird but at the same it's time I was no like, that's this cool. is my only opportunity yeah. to like, near death with like kane hotter okay yes um, anyways i met him um god what was my point oh the sleeping bag kill is one of my favorite kills in it's horror so movies. good it's so good that's so, in like, mm-hmm. that's in the new blood that's in seven that's the one jason versus carrie i think and it's an x mm-hmm. yes and it's an <laughs> yes in a wild scene yeah oh, but that's like my favorite it. kill so so mm-hmm. good yeah agreed we love but it <laughs> i also was gonna t- say really quick before i forget um, when Evil Lurks, that's the other movie that I watched. Sure. Um, yep. This past weekend. Did you wow. like it? Yes. You should watch Terrified. <gasps> I Ooh. love that movie. I love oh. that movie. Wait, really? Same yes. director. Oh my God. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. I was like, huh, I really like that. Yeah. I liked mm-hmm. it. I was like, oh, it was the first one I watched, and it was the one that like made me keep watching horror movies. So I liked it. He's anyway, making a sorry. new one now. I forget, but he's a great. I really like yeah. his his. Yeah, I like the way that he sees things. Oh, me mm-hmm. too. Me too. And like nothing is more disturbing than watching a woman axe herself in the face. Like, Ooh. just to, to comment on that too, because they posted that on their social media. I think it was a twenty four. Just I forgot who, <laughs> but right. it was wild because. You know, when you're on Instagram and people post more than one thing on their, um, like on one post, they'll have like a couple of pictures, but sometimes when you refresh, it'll automatically go to the second of Mm -hmm. their like sets of pictures. And so the first thing was like trigger warning for blah, 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 blah. And I saw it was like something when evil, uh, when evil lurks. But then when I refreshed my feed, it went directly to when she oh. axes her face oh. off. And I'm like, this is not a great feature on uh. Instagram because I didn't want to see this. And y'all oh, automatically no. swiped to the uh-huh. next thing for me. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, this is That's awful. Yeah. Off. I literally was just like, this is not what I want to see right now. This is why I refreshed my face. Like, I didn't want to see this. And immediately it was just like, axe to the face was the yeah. first thing that's on my feed. I'm like, this yeah. is not fun. Yeah. 
and <laughs> yes. huge shout out to latina horror and celebrating latin horror and just uh, absolutely just chef's kiss just yeah love. Mm-hmm. Yes. another good love, one love, love, love. uh Husera, the Bone Woman on Shudder. Ooh, really okay. good. I love Shudder so really much. I feel good. like Shudder has those hidden gems, those yeah. like indie, Ooh, yeah. like mm-hmm. just great. Mm, I just love it. Yeah. I just love it. Yes. That, I think that takes place in Mexico City, Mexico. I think that. Did you say Bone Woman or Shadow Woman? It's it's uh, it's bone the Bone Woman. woman. Husera, the Bone Woman. The okay, because okay. okay. mm-hmm. I'm writing it down. <laughs> that was awesome. Yes. Yeah, very good. All right, cool. Okay, I think, well, we talked all of our horror things today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm horrored out. No, I'm just kidding. Never. We, we have uh, talked to the gambit, to the spectrum of all things horror. Thank you so much, Ashlina, for being with us to talk about the cabin in the woods. You can find us talking horror on all social medias, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at Talk Horror Pod. And Ashlina, where can they find you again so that they have that? Um, again, my name is Ashlina, but you can find me on social media. It's going to be Ashlina, but it's going to be two A's at the end instead of just one. Um, but you Mm. can literally find me with that, um, username everywhere, Instagram. Uh, I do have two different TikToks. One is an IRL TikTok and one is a gaming TikTok. So if you want to see more of the decorating for Halloween, me going code orange, you know, looking and Halloween hunting and stuff like that, that's going to be IRL. Mm-hmm. Um, but gaming stuff will be on the other one. But yeah, everywhere that there is a social media platform, I am Ashlina on that. Um, I'm I'm just going to say this. I know it's going to be airing after, but I do want to let you all know that I got a really, really, really amazing Halloween opportunity and I can't wait to share it with everybody. Um, I should be posting it on the third. So definitely keep a lookout for that. It's probably going to be one of the biggest things that I've done in my career thus far. So um, I'm really excited. So yeah, just lots of cool things um, as Halloween approaches. Come hang out with me for some Halloween goodness with the Hallow Queen. Um, And I forgot to say what games I play on Twitch. I play cozy games. I play horror games. Um, and I love like uh, farming RPGs and like sure. stuff like that. So cool. um, I'm also playing Hellblade 2 right now. So yeah, that's it. That's all my little Ooh, things. That's great. And uh, <laughs> as a reminder, all the in the description of this episode, you can find all, uh, some of the links down there. Fresh Lena. Yes. Yay. And producer Brian, where can they listen to us? Oh, yeah. You can listen to us wherever you get podcasts like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Rate and review us there. Five mm. stars, please. Ooh, and thank and you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. How do you want to sign this off, guys? Um, What would you choose, Nikisha? What would I choose? Would you kill your pothead friend? <laughs> Uh, oh shit! Oh, I thought you were saying like, what item would you choose in the in the basement? Oh, that's another good question Ooh. too. Ooh. Actually, that what was there was like a necklace. That oh, was that she around. almost put mm-hmm. on. Yeah, yeah. I mm-hmm. love a necklace. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that that was probably that would probably be me. What about yeah. y'all? Uh, the Hellraiser box for the puzzle. Oh box. yeah, that was cool. One hundred percent. Yes. One hundred percent. Jamie. I mean, I feel like that conch would have totally gotten me. I would have gotten <laughs> mermans. <laughs> it was Screaming. like, I love a good conch. I love like, co- you know, collecting right. like, uh, sand dollars, all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> yes. Producer Brian? <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably open the music box like an idiot. Oh. Um. <laughs> oh, uh, well. Yeah. yeah. Fun times. <laughs> but none I mean, of but us let's... would end up down there in the first place because we're too good for it. I was going to say, but yes. like also we're all idiots for just being there in the first place. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, my favorite. Oh, here's my favorite line in the movie, quote wise, is when the um the basement, the floor door opens up and he's like, oh, it must have been the wind. He's like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> yes. like whatever his comment was, or like a wind didn't do Doesn't that. I did, yeah, 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 whatever it, it was. Makes no yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, I, I enjoyed <laughs> Love that. Um, <laughs> well, thank you guys for listening to our episode. And yeah. thank we'll you, Ashlina, you so much. Again. Thank you thank again you. for joining thank us. You. Thank you. This thank was an you. honor. This was an honor. Thank you so much of for course. having me. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.